What is going on? You are listening and watching, of course, Tags Live, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition. And this is episode 366. I'm your host, Steve V, alongside Cody Maurice Doggett. How the hell are you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm doing wonderful. It's a beautiful evening, and I'm in my nice stringy shirt right here, darling. Had to yeah, it up for that... you guys. Exactly. We were saying a little Pirates of the Caribbean thing going on there. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> but... <laughs> in honor of Johnny Depp, since you seem to be on his side. Oh my, Ambers. you want to call me out on the, on the podcast? Giving you a little inside it. pre-show discussion. So, on the, yeah, ahead, what okay, were you going to say? Right. I think that she looks more like the aggressor than he does. I will say, I will just say that. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Neither here nor there. Okay. Continue. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. All right. Know. Well, we on this gorgeous night, as you said, I just came back. It's Wednesday night. Thanks to Get Vocal that we are live for Tags Live. And earlier today, I'm happy to report that I went to the theater and I saw... Plaza Suite with Sarah Ooh. Jessica Parker and Matthew okay. Broderick. Oh my God, it is so good, you guys. If if any of you ever uh, saw the movie, sometimes you can catch it on a network, TCM, one of my favorite networks, or just rent it. It was made in the 60s, okay. and it was a big, it's three vignettes in the iconic Plaza Hotel here in New York City, mm -hmm. and it's all set in one room in like 1968, 1969, Okay. totally different storylines so you're watching two different storylines the beauty of it is the original had who is the original viv of uh, the walter matthew many of you know the iconic comedic actor walter matthew yep. played all three vignettes and Gee. matthew brought yes and like the same name matthew broderick plays in all three of them however in the original mm -hmm. three different actresses played the different parts oh, and hell because no. it was a ve <laughs> it was a total vehicle and i remember hearing this on my favorite channel tcm that it was a vehicle mm -hmm. for matthew uh matthew why am i walter Matthew? walter matthew excuse me walter matthew <laughs> matthew <laughs> And so in the new one, though, Sarah Jessica Parker plays all three roles, and it's oh, so good. cool. So they give a chance to the female that she can actually diversify herself and play all three roles, correct? That's right. right. And you think, yes. And really. sisters are doing it for themselves, too, okay? Sisters. How does it go? <laughs> I'm doing it for themselves. <laughs> I knew you could say it. It is so good. If you're coming to New York City, please, it's going through, I think, June, Viv. You can still see Plaza Suite playing. It is so good. You will love it. I highly recommend it. I'm like on a high from it. And also, just a reminder that we are doing our deeper conversation next Tuesday, May 31st at 9 p.m. Eastern Time when you join and are a part of our Patreon community. And mm -hmm. we've been having some really good discussions over there, Cody. Oh, what do you yeah. think about those? I cannot wait. I love them. It's always good to get a little bit more insight into our listeners and have them talk back and have them weigh in on things that we talk about here on Tags Podcast. It's always so much fun. So make sure you tune in, make sure you come in and watch and join the conversation. We get really personal and deeper, one of my favorite Ooh. words. And yeah, for a lot <laughs> of reasons. <laughs> yeah. Deeper happens next Tuesday, our once a month conversation, May 31st. And if you want to join the conversation, head over to our Patreon page and grab a tier. Uh, for now, I'm going to do it at our virgin tier and above. Oh, cool. So at the $10 level and above per month, uh, go to patreon.com forward slash tags podcast and you guys can join the conversation. All right. Oh. Well, so much to talk about, oh, yeah. Cody. And I think I was confused with you, but I think my other co-host, I was talking about a reality show in the mm -hmm. UK called Naked Attraction. And okay. 
You do. Yeah, you're no. like, I don't know what you're talking I've about. I've never, I had never heard of this before you mentioned it earlier. And I was like, I'm going to st stand by that I have never heard of a naked attraction. So go okay. ahead. Okay. Well, and for newer <laughs> listeners, you might not know what the hell we're talking about, but it's a show in the UK, British television dating game show. So th think the dating game. It's on Channel 4 over there where a clothed, a clothed person is mm -hmm. faced with six naked people who are initially hidden in their booths. So essentially, if I was looking uh, in, the, the, in the game, I would have uh -huh. six contestants. I would not see their faces. I would be able to ask them questions, Q&A, okay. find out a little bit more about them. But I would be each time they take off a piece of their clothing and you get to kind of see oh. their bodies, eventually they're naked and people are choosing based on body. It's oh. kind of, it's not even trying to play the game of, oh, we're trying to get to know your, they are getting to know their personality, but it is definitely judging on body types as well. I gave you a look at all the 13 contestants' dicks. Yep, and you sure did. Uh, can you put that in the comment section for people to sure. look for themselves watching us live? What did you think of some of the dicks that you saw in there? Because I don't know. They were kind of the regular people, <laughs> right? There's one guy I have to say who's second on the list and he has these amazing tattoos, one of an eagle and the other one of a, I guess a, coyote that are gorgeous he has low-hanging balls so he's my huh. pick okay. just saying and i would definitely be asking him a lot of questions too but, but there's a lot going. <laughs> but also i'm intrigued by the tattoos as much as i am anything else okay what did you see in there that was intriguing to you or not <laughs> well, I mean, they're all perfectly fine penises. I would prefer to see the rear view beforehand. So let's just put that out there. Um, I would to make my judgment based on what's going on behind. But the, the penises are fine. One of them looks completely like an elephant trunk. And I'm surprised that you didn't say anything about it. It's so big. It's so beautiful. And it's uncut. So I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm going to put in my vote for you for that one. Okay. I mean, I'm still going with my tattoo guy. But okay. one thing that's tattoo really interesting... One thing to keep two things to keep in mind is people tend to be growers, not showers. So okay. they're not hard on this when they're doing it. So you never really know on that front. The other thing is you can totally tell this is a European show because 90% of the penises we're looking at, except for the one you're talking about, the elephant one, are all uncut. And did you not notice that part of it, Cody? Oh, I noticed for sure. I think that, I think that's amazing. I love an uncut penis. I don't have no preference as far as. I was talking to a friend uncut. of mine who does have a problem with, or they don't uh -huh. not have a problem with it, but yeah. they don't like they have a preference, that. Yeah. that. It's not their thing. And yeah. I don't know that, because I think it's gay men for the most part, don't really care. Can we ask a poll for those watching us? Do you care Let's or not care? And ram it up your ass. But no, I'm but, That's my favorite kind of poll. Okay. Yeah, so. Billy says he doesn't care. People, um, the female and the bunch here, I'm not a fan <laughs> of it. I didn't want to say that over off camera over here, but you, you were the friend, by the way. <laughs> James says, I don't care, but I like uncut oh okay so you actually like uncut yeah there's a whole host of people that actually prefer uncut and for those of us that are cut it's always like you know there's some people that have dated me cody that uh -huh. think because i'm latino that i'm going to yeah. be uncut and i have to t this is maybe 15 years ago i don't know if people are really in that boat anymore but i had to say i'm not i mean i'm sorry roman catholic raised and just not what you think same but way. it made me, yeah, same with you too. What are else oh, yeah. people saying, Cody? People are saying, Keaton says he would be excited to see. Damon says, prefer cut unless it's from Louisiana, which is very specific. So I, <laughs> that made me giggle a little bit. I was you like. You need to tell us a little bit more about why that. From, okay, from, yeah. Why from Louisiana? <laughs> and Teddy says, I like both equally. They both provide different experiences that are equally enjoyable. And I said, you know what? Variety is the spice of life. So I agree with him that. 
with that. I like that. Yeah. I think I'm either way. I've been traveled internationally and I don't, yeah, I don't think I have a preference on it yeah, because when either. it's hard, you can't really it doesn't, tell. It's it doesn't, yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah. A, it's a, a dick is a dick is a dick, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly right is joe can you out your boyfriend joe oh no here? no 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 <laughs> i can say it's get... very nice and i enjoy it that's what i will okay. say okay i like that <laughs> all right well spe staying in the uk trend of reality shows there's a okay. new show that premieres tonight y'all on amazon prime which is called Love Struck High, Prime Video. You can check it out. It's actually the narrated by who's the narrator? Lindsay Lohan. Thank you. Thank yes. you for being here today, my producer off camera. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much, it, did you watch the trailer for this? <laughs> we watched it together. Yeah, but I sent you the trailer of it. Oh, that was just I haven't the... watched that yet. Yeah. Okay. That it's one. a brand new show on there of the high school students, and they're all. Basically, it's a reality show on finding love. There's a lot of queer representation in this new show, Love Struck High, which I'm really excited to see. But in their promo video that we were watching offline earlier, they talked yeah. about red, red flags and green flags is, is what they use, but red flags in dating. And some of the things, let's just go through some of those, Cody, and we'll see who agrees with what, if it's a okay. red flag for you, yes. if you agree or don't agree. Some of them going, if you go to, a lot of the girls are saying, if you go to the guy's house and the bed is messy and unmade and it's just ratchet, I can definitely <laughs> agree. For, you know when you've gone over to some guy's house and it's just crumpled up. There's a potato chips, maybe, and some other stuff that you don't know what's going on in there. Uh -huh. And it's just like, oh, and I'm going to get my naked body in there? Uh -uh. <laughs> Think twice the about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, my mattress was on the floor at one point in time. but I mean, yeah. but did, were you... But my bed was made. Sheets? Exactly. Did you change? I your changed sheets? my sheets. It was on exactly. the floor. Yeah. I feel were, like were there judging potato chips judging wrappers all around. Either. Yeah. Do you have a problem with that? Oh, oh, for sure. That's a red flag. You got cleanliness is next to godliness. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then somebody said like a really thin pillow. Which <laughs> my pillows right now are so they're those Tempur-Pedic cushioned pillows and I love mm -hmm. them and anytime a guy has come over or a guest that stayed in my bed when I wasn't here said oh my god your pillows are so amazing I hug my pillow now when I go to sleep <laughs> I don't know if wishful thinking but it's 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 my comfort zone it's my Linus blanket if you will and I'm Aww, happy for it so yeah, yeah. but if you Linus. have a thin a thin pillow absolutely not no mm -mm. I have and okay so that made me laugh because I have thin pillows but they're just for decoration I don't sleep on them does that count or does that not count can you pull up an example of it or <laughs> so I have multiple I have like eight pillows on my bed and what I do is I sleep with two blunt two two pillows and then maybe two more pillows they're thin pillows and they're just there to have the uh display the pillowcase on there so for display exactly oh sounds dramatic and extra <laughs> so i guess i'm here for it check you win all right some of the other things that they talked about is people that talk about horoscope too much and everybody in the promo video if you remember when you watched it cody Mm -hmm. It was a red, 90% of them put a red flag. I think you even had a red flag off camera here that talking too much about horoscope is a red flag. For me, absolutely not. I oh, love talking either. about horoscope. I want to know me your too. horoscope. I immediately, it's not like I'm going to, I dated Aries before and mm -hmm. I am a Capricorn. Now Capricorns mm -hmm. are, have the horns and so do the Aries. The Aries are a little bit, fatter and not as pretty as the horns Ooh. of a Capricorn, in my okay. opinion. Okay. And I just think we're going to butt heads too much in general, or they're going to boss me or try and boss me around too much. And it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. So that's a red flag for me. And I like to know that it doesn't mean that I'll exclude you. If you're hot, I'll have sex with you. But 
<laughs> but you won't but get a call back afterwards. You won't get a call back. Yeah, now we're casting. But what, what do you feel about, and what does the audience think about when people talk about astrology? Horoscopes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, I am totally fine with it. Like you said, I don't base my life or my... Uh, communication with somebody, how I get along with somebody based on horoscopes. But I think it's interesting to find out what people's horoscopes are to see how we do interact. Because I think that sometimes for the, it does, it actually is true. All my best friends are cancers. So, and yeah. so, and you are a Capricorn, my sister's a Capricorn and we, we get along in a, My in a sister's very a cancer. Similar, exactly. We get along in a very similar way to the way that I get along with my sister. So You know, that's a really educated way of saying what we're talking about. It's I think it's really easy to dismiss the talking of, uh, of astrology. But you, I think what you're saying is what how I take it. It's like we know a little bit about certain signs. We know a little bit about ourselves and astrology. And so it's fun to see if it actually works yeah in that and it doesn't mean that we're going to dismiss you completely but i think it's fun and yeah it's what's the totally. harm i mean there's so much and hatred and boring things to talk about that you talk about with people all the time and i think it's kind of fun to see if you if the guy you're interested if you guys fall in line with some of these norm normalities of astrology science or yeah. don't but i think it's kind of fun Oh, me. yeah, I completely agree with you. And a red flag for me was the fact that they said that they they thought a horoscopes were a red flag, but they still were like, oh, but I don't date a Aries. That's what they said in a promo. <laughs> or a Pisces, I, like, I think. Yeah, right. <laughs> what are the people saying, Cody? The people are saying, oh, Vivian, your sister is a, is a cancer. She said that, too. And I was like, I know, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and Blake goes, I'm an Aries, and I think I get along well with Sagittarius, but I'm not a fan. Uh, I'm not. I'm far from an expert. <clears throat> Damon says horoscopes have validity sometimes. I get along with Leos 100% of the time. And Vivian goes, okay, maybe it's not a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> And Teddy goes, her name was Amber. Oh, he's, he went back to Amber Heard. <laughs> You're, another, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're back on our original topic. That really isn't a topic of tonight's conversation. But that's was, okay. <laughs> he was a part of our pre-show. Blake, yeah. I'm just curious, as an Aries, are you bullheaded and do you tend to control situations? Mm. Wait for that answer. Because even... We're going to talk a little bit about relationships in, in a little bit, because one uh -huh. of the things that they talk about on this show is people that talk about their exes too much or are friends oh. with their exes. Yep. And you and I were talking, we have different viewpoints on this. I <laughs> do not have a problem. I'm friends with most of my exes. Wasn't, isn't that true? Yeah. I'm pretty much friends with all of my exes. And in, in fact, even one of my first boyfriends ever that we dated for a good solid three years, we mm -hmm. are still in the 90s. We are still super close. He's an Aries, Cody. Uh -huh. Yep. And he tends to, but see, you see, now I know how to work with him. So for example, <laughs> he is an amazing cook. He should have been a chef. Yeah, like he knows every answer. He can cook up a storm. He knows spices. He knows the right everything you need to know. And I'm getting into cooking, so I know. Hey, I'm not going to say his name, but can you tell me is this right? And I act all innocent when I ask. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. he's fires back because he's a control freak on exactly. And I get all my answers, so I don't even have to Google stuff. And I cook up amazing things. And he he tells me how to store things. He tells me more than I need to know about certain things. Which is great. I just yeah. uh huh uh huh uh huh. I say uh huh uh huh uh huh a lot, but but I learned how to do. It. <laughs> I tune that in what amazing. I want. That's yeah. exactly that's exactly how it should be done. You should take what you learn from a previous situation and 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 apply it and learn how to use it to your benefit in future situations. I completely agree with that. I think that 
Oh, we were talking about the red flag exes. as far as exes are being concerned. And I said it wasn't a green I've already or, been in a situation a with you, Cody. I think it's a red flag for you don't, because don't. we were in a situation. <laughs> we I were in a, a real life. I say it's a yellow flag because it depends on the level of, of their interaction and how they communicate that they were exes to me so it's a it's definitely a yellow flag it's not a stop it's not a go we are but I'm what if they get a, what if the ex got us into a, a free into a club <laughs> girl <laughs> why do we have a know. problem <laughs> let a bitch know beforehand you, so you're saying you didn't know that this was an ex exactly and that was the that created a red flag versus a it, green it, flag I don't it know why this is green, but yeah. An, an emotional response. It created red something. It, it, <laughs> it created, yes. Fire engine red. Yes, exactly. Okay, so oh, that's another yeah. one. What were some of the other ones that we were talking about that... Some emojis. of the other ones we were talking about, yes. Emojis and the good night and good morning text. So which one do you want to do red. first? Good, let's do the good night... So one of the things they're saying on this promo clip is when you're dating somebody, do they text you good morning and good night? And a mm -hmm. lot of them, now mind you, this is this brand new show, Love Struck High. So these are high school students. and But a lot of us don't ever grow up from that time period. Yeah. So we can oh, put yeah. ourselves in that category. If you get a good morning text and or don't get one, it's a red flag. And to me... No way. I don't want to feel like I have to say good night and good morning. I want to feel that it's natural. If I feel it one morning on a Wednesday or tomorrow after our show and I woke up because we had a great show uh -huh. and I want to text this guy, maybe I'll text him right now on the show. I don't know. But maybe this is when I'm oh. feeling it. Oh. You know, maybe this is when I'm feeling it. But I don't want to have to feel that it's mandatory. I hate that because then it becomes chore like do you like that cody so i do like it because oh, it here shows, we go because it shows me that you are thinking of me so i like to be shown that you're thinking of me. It's, and i do enjoy getting a good morning text getting especially if we're not in the same place i enjoy getting a good night text so we say good night to each other before we go to bed and this is in a committed dating relationship so we're talking about early on. So let's say, Cody, I think they're talking. This is high school. Remember, we're in the minds of high school. Students. Oh, that's but right. So, I have so, to, I have to but take let's, it back let's, to high school. But let's bring it to us, kind of, you're dating somebody. Think back to three months into your dating no. moment with <laughs> Joe. And mm -hmm. I I do like, if you're, if you're getting serious about somebody in those first three months, as it get escalates, I think it's probably good to say good night. However, what if in those three months you and I decide to go to the cock, which we've done when <laughs> fortunately it wasn't happening when you are you calling were... me out all the show. <laughs> Are you going to be like, oh, shit, I, it's a Thursday night. I didn't have to work tomorrow and it's 1 a.m. Did you text him at 1130 because he went to bed early, but you know that you were about to get some at the cock? Or what? I think yes is the answer. I did text him before I went to the cock. <laughs> <laughs> and then turn your phone to good night in silent mode and had a good night. Yeah. But what about the, you couldn't do the good morning, Cody, because you're, first of all, you're not a morning person. As and... soon as they get up though, at 1030, 1030, o'clock, I was about to say. <laughs> but see, I think that brings, I don't want to do the good morning one because I think everybody has a different morning and some people yeah. are up super early at 6 a.m., a lot of my L.A. friends will text me at the crack of dawn, which is fine for me because I'm on mm -hmm. the East Coast. So it's, yeah. what, 9 o'clock here? But do not be texting me at 6 a.m. here. I, a lot of my friends here in New York know nothing before 9 a.m. Do not do it. I put or on, you'll you get know the throw up today. emoji. <laughs> you know, I from today, I put on my silent. Joe has tried to call me before if he wanted me to, like, 
run an errand early in the morning. He's like, I could not get through to you because you have. Yeah, what's that thing on your phone? (laughs) Or Cody's not accepting any text. (laughs) It says right now, do not disturb. Do not disturb mode. I cut it on when I go to sleep because I do not like to be. And there are certain people that I allow, like my mother and my sister, and. I'm probably oh, should you, put they Jeff, can break should, the do not disturb web. Yeah, I, I have allowed them to break it. And uh, because they know I should probably allow Joe to but we'll see if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you might. <laughs> He's he just screamed at me from the other. Oh, room. No. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you better do that really quickly. Yeah. Any other things should. that we wanted to do? You want to read a couple of things before we move on? No, let's talk about what your red flag is. So my red flag, because we were talking about this, is over texting. Oh, so okay. there's a, so I'm gonna give you an example. There's a guy in LA. We used to be F buddies back in mm-hmm. the day in LA when I lived there. And I'm really he reached out to me recently, and I'm gonna be going to LA because we're nominated for best sex podcast Woo-hoo. by Cyber Socket Awards, and it's happening next Tuesday in LA. I'm super excited. I hope Teddy you will be able to come. Anyways, I'm going out there, and he reached out to me and said, Hey, because we used to have a good situation of sleeping yeah. together. And well, he is wants to see me, and we're getting together. He has this knack, but I think I stopped it of over texting okay. so he'll send out a text and he's one of those early morning risers so mm-hmm. at 9 a.m i'm getting texts at 6 a.m but it's la though from him. So, it's la well, so i'm getting a little later at least but he's up early but that's okay his, he, oh if he wakes up at six then you're getting it at nine and that's not cool i would not yeah but beyond that i think i'm looking forward to seeing him but I have to watch it and I think I put it to bed because he was over texting. So he would say a couple things. Hey, how's your day going? This and that. And we would start texting. And then he continuously goes and blah, 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 and on and on and on. And I'm like, I don't know. My mind does not work on text. I, I can't. I just can't. It's just not my way of. So I think I've learned, I've taught him because I think you can teach people how you want them to treat you. You definitely can. I agree. And I've smashed it a little bit. So I've in the last two months, I've managed to now I get like 15 to 85 texts now from him in a, <laughs> in a period of span. And I can handle the 15 before I'm like, no, and want to throw the phone. <laughs> but you had to do it. So, oh, you I, have all the I, tricks, girl. I know I'm know the iPhone inside and out. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so she said and say that I do not like it when somebody texts you 18 times what could have been one text that annoys the. And I have a really good friend that does that. And that really, oh. really, really, I mean, I've told him that that could have been one. You should just text that one time. He's like, I just want to make sure you're paying attention. He does not care. <laughs> I think I know this friend. Yeah. I think you do too. <laughs> We're not going to say his name. He might be in this room in, a, in just a minute, but we will see. <laughs> a couple things that people are saying is boundaries. Yes, Teddy, boundaries. I set the boundaries for this guy, and I think he got the hint, thank God. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him because once I set that boundary, I'm really happy that he picked up on the cue. So that now, because if he hadn't picked up on the cue, that may have led to, speaking of red flags, other red flags. And yeah. I may have may have ghosted him or decided, you know what, It's I have other people I could be seeing in L.A. I do not need to go to Santa Monica and do this whole thing. <laughs> but because I'm going to do it. So I'm really excited. Somebody else said, Damon says, good night text calls are a must and we're talking about in those early i think yeah do you agree off camera yeah 
thumbs up to the good night text. I think you're right. Yeah. And Joe agrees with me too. So I will okay. just Okay. In the other there. room. Okay, good. I love it. <laughs> what is James saying? James says that boils my piss. Oh my gosh. I haven't heard that in so long when someone texts too much. I've never heard of that. Oh, boils my piss. Wow. <laughs> that means you're so mad that your your piss is boiling. <laughs> I oh, love that. Man, that's hilarious. Also, another one of my red flags. It's the last one that I'll share too. If they don't like drag race, because that means they're not in touch with their feminine side. Okay. And I haven't even my long standing college roommate that wasn't into it forever that just got into it. Now they're watching like from season one on. I'm oh. like, child, just watch the current season and go forward. You don't need to start all the way back there. Let's do but, it. I want to watch oh, it. Though. Oh my God. I have <laughs> other friends though that are re-watching seasons and I'm like, how are you re-watching? You already know who won. I could that's watch a little month. over and over and over again. It's so entertaining. Okay. Maybe we'll watch Drag Race yeah that'll be fun a thing to yeah. do okay yeah uh speaking any other th- drag race billy says absolutely <laughs> yes um right somebody else, i i wrote this note on there and maybe you can help me figure it out i wrote okay. not re- not replying people oh Being i know what i want red Okay, two things I wanted to. I, we're really like expanding this, I but know, I guess it's right? a hot topic because this is. <laughs> you know what? This is how we communicate. And you were telling me off camera, breadcrumbing was a thing, and I wanted to talk about this on the. Do you know what breadcrumbing means, no, Cody? No, tell I me. I have essentially it's threading somebody along via text. I had a term here somewhere, and I can't find it anywhere. But is is that? Am I saying that right? So essentially. You like particularly on the apps. I have a guy on Scrub that continuously reaches out every so often. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Okay. And and re- the recent one was, and I was kind of because he's kind of hot in the pictures, and I want to get together with him. I'm excited to get the way he looks hot in the pictures. We just haven't made it happen. I always say I don't do good well on the apps. And so he recently said it. And then he recently said, are you on like NS some, something? Maybe I should get it up really. What is that? And he's like, it's another app. And I said, no. And he said, if I can find it really quickly, you look like a lot of guys on that app. And I was like, oh, what? that is not something that you say to somebody. That is is it? not cool. So he he said... Are you on BBRT? Does anybody know what BBRT? What? And I said, well, this. I said, what's BBRT? Well, actually, when I responded, I said, what's BBRC? I can't even get my acronyms right. <laughs> he said, an app. Some guy looks a lot like you. And I said, oh, I see. And then he didn't respond to that. So what the fuck is that happening? Oh, do you want me to say what it is? Yes. Bareback RT. It's a community for men cruising for raw men on men bareback sex. No condoms. Okay. Oh, I mean... <laughs> but when he said, when I said I'm not, he's like, there's a guy that looks like you. And I said, oh, I see. Didn't respond and you said, back. No one looks like me. So I'm but like, okay. I just think he, this guy's been breadcrumbing me along, if you yeah, will, that sure. term. And that's a big red flag for me. He's on, on BBRT at the same no. time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we all know people like that, don't okay. we? Oh, for sure. When I was on Grinder and Scruff, I would be in contact with people. And then I would say, oh, well, let's meet up because I'm a meet up person. I like to get it out of the way. I like to make sure you're, you're who you are in in enough time for me to not get get attached to you and we, it's it's definitely a red flag when people don't want to meet up it means that they're not they're trying to catfish you so if they don't want to meet well, up then they're not worth blank blank says maybe he just was trying to figure out if you're into bb we've been talking for two Ooh. years two years now he know he, we've been wanting to connect he could have asked me i'm on prep i think i have it on there i he could have easily asked that question to ask that question. I just, 
I don't know. That was lame, I think, to say I look yeah. like somebody else. I was going to respond back. I do not look like anybody else. I am myself. You don't get me started that. on my high horse. And, yeah, <laughs> there's only one you here. You are fabulous for that, honey. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> do not get us started on that. Yeah. Vivian says, uh, my sister off camera, I meet up. Yeah, I, I'm a meet up person. And yeah. What is the deal with not wanting to meet up? Breadcrumbing happens when it's just stringing people along. And who wants to waste all this time? Did you do that a lot, Cody? Or no, you bread met your boyfriend. Yeah. yeah, I met him as soon as possible. You put breadcrumbs in your in your pasta <laughs> sauce. I mean, you don't <laughs> in your meatloaf. No, that's too that's too much carbs. I don't even know what breadcrumbing <laughs> is. Okay, <laughs> I'm good on that. <laughs> Blake says that maybe somebody is moving using your pics on BBRT. Oh, well, you know, we were hacked. So at this point, yeah, oh, maybe, maybe I need to go to BBRT. It is BBRT, right? Yes. Yes. yes okay. It is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> he put baby food on what? Wait, what are people saying on there? Read that? You read it. I wasn't reading oh, it. You're not reading that way. Okay. <laughs> and lastly, people not replying. So this is a whole thing when people are saying when they've seen you've said something and they're just not replying cody do you get mad at that you know me i'm a quick reply back but i did have an acquaintance guy that wanted to get together with me recently and i just wasn't sure i really wanted to and i was holding off and he he canceled on me so i felt like i had an out one day Mm -hmm. and so we rescheduled for this other day And then he said, are we getting together? Like at 9 a.m., he's texting me for an evening Thursday night. And I didn't respond back right away. I was going to. Yeah. And he said, Steve, like question mark, (laughs) question mark. And I finally was like, yes, I was. I'm feeling a little under the weather. Okay, I wasn't. I just was feeling under the weather to see him. And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I was waiting to see if I was going to feel a little bit better, and I didn't. I totally gave away my game right now, and yeah. but I don't normally do this. But to, he qu- clocked me, Steve? Question mark. Do you do that if someone's not replying? No, I block them right away if they don't respond. And I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, we have got to move on. That We've exhausted that topic, I think, yeah. for the most part. I mean, Which one do you want to go to? For... Oh, I think yes. we should talk I'm... about Strange Loop. Yes. So I agree. Speaking of Broadway, the one of the most nominated Broadway, Tony Award nominated shows right now is Strange Loop. And it's about a feminine, queer, and outspoken uh, ju- is it Jaquel Spivy, mm, Cody? I have to look back at ja- it. His name is Jaquel Spivy. I hope I'm saying it. He um, He's currently the leading man. He's redefining what it means. Spivy. Yeah, Jaquel Spivy <laughs> is redefining what it means to be a leading man on Broadway. Both critics and audiences are paying attention. Hired shortly after graduating from Pittsburgh's Point Park University to star in Michael R. Jackson's Pulitzer Prize winning musical, A Strange Loop. The Mm -hmm. endearingly sassy 23-year-old has already won Theater World, and he's doing really good. But Spivy spends nearly every moment of the show, quote, as a self-proclaimed big black and queer ass, great American musical, pouring his heart out as a conflicted artist trying to decide who he is and what he wants in a world that goes out of its way to remind him that he is too black, too Mm -hmm. gay, too Mm -hmm. fat, and not hung enough to play in the big leagues. Oh my. Rather than give up, yeah, rather than give up or sell out by writing writing a dreaded Tyler Perry gospel play, Usher continues to push through. I love that part. Even if that means fucking up and hurting everyone around him. And I just think it's really refreshing to have a lead that's nominated for a Tony. We may, we are starting to see it in our television landscape right now. Yep. Uh, 
but it's really refreshing to have a black queer role model like this. I think it's going to, it's cha changing the game. What were your thoughts really when you is. heard about this? I think it's just so amazing for so many reasons. From a representation standpoint, I can't name very many Broadway musicals or like you said, TV shows or movies in general that have a black gay man as the lead. That to me is groundbreaking. And especially when you add in that he's a fuller figured gay black man, that's just And from an artistic point of view, I see myself in the musical so much because I almost cried reading the description. It's about not quite fitting in and not quite fitting the mold and persevering anyway. Just keep keep going and making sure that you are true to your art, not selling out, and just really being your authentic self and and trying to succeed in life. And I cannot wait to see it. It's it We really gotta go, good. Cody. We should go, yeah. for sure. I think it's so good. And along those lines, because I think this is a th we need to see more of, there is a recent high school student, yeah. drag a drag queen who was crowned Ooh. Indiana High School's prom king. This mm -hmm. is such a great story. Yes. Christian Hernandez, who's 18, non-binary out of jeffersonville high school student in indiana beat out their four competitors to earn the prom king crown so he's prom king right mm -hmm. and dressed up in drag and yep. they did it he they they go by they did it in yep. a sequin gown feather boa and heels recalling the night hernandez who uses the pronoun they told NBC News, when I walked out there, I left everybody speechless. No one was more that. surprised. No one was more surprised by the win than Hernandez themselves when they heard their name called. Quote, in my head, I'm thinking, I'm not going to win. I was just praying to the gay lords, they said. Hernandez shared that they knew they wanted to wear something a little different than their tuxedoed competitors. Quote, I was just planning to do something really crazy for prom, and I thought, why not do go in drag, they recalled. I want to inspire people to try and break down those barriers and that have... And that have been put up. I watched this video. I will post this on tagspodcast.com. I was showing mm -hmm. it to you offline. It was really inspiring. The girls in particular are screaming yeah. because I don't think he, they really realized they were going to. Mm -hmm. And to have, so we were saying it was almost like two queens won because they yeah. also had a, a prom queen win as cisgender. well what were your thoughts yeah. when you saw that Cody oh it just melted my heart it's so wholesome and they're a figure uh, a, a fuller figured person as well so that warmed my heart already and you can't first of all you can't tell them nothing they look so good Drag Race season 45, here they come. Watch out for Christian Hernandez. <laughs> right? Like said, right? They, they look amazing in this in this gown. The face is beat. I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm here for <laughs> all of this. My favorite part was, like you said, the love and support that they got from their school. And the one girl, did you hear the girl go, excuse me, I can't see. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I like, love I it. Move. I need to look and see my girlfriend. It was, oh my God, it was so Oh, cute. I'm going to uh, rewatch that. I love that. I just can't, I just wish I had this, the support, acceptance that was available to them in, in during my high school years. So I think it would have made the world difference. And I hope that they go on to do amazing things. And I know they will because they're, they have that support system. So here's yeah. the thing is that here we are having this awesome platform that we love mm -hmm. so much and speaking our truth. And we are yeah. in our 40s, 50s here oh. and we have other oh. we have oh, oh. <laughs> we have millennials too on the show and we have anyway we feature everybody but i just think that it's really heartwarming to see that because when i was in high school and there's a brand yeah. new film having a reboot that oh. i am not for we were talking about it <laughs> offline top gun is gonna have this reboot and uh. i'm kind of like we were talking about it offline i'm so happy because i never know where you stand 
Like if we were to go to the movies, Cody, uh-huh. I I feel like we're going to see a comic book movie, or I don't know if we're going to want it. But you did tell me about everything, everywhere, all at once, and yeah. I loved it. So it's good, right? You do have great taste, yeah. So yeah, but I was a little nervous, and I keep asking all my close knit group. Uh, this is the trigger. Like, do you want to see Top Gun? And most ninety <laughs> percent of my close knit group are like. Hell no. <laughs> and you were one of the hell no. And the yeah. reason why it's it's related to this topic is because when I was a high school student in the 80s, Top Gun was coming out and it was this whole ma- macho, over the top, machismo kind mm-hmm. of film with that represented everything as a struggling gay boy who couldn't come out at all who had none of what we're seeing and what we're talking about. There was no Broadway show about a Tony nominated black queer character. There was nobody spoke to me and my experience. Absolutely not. But they sure spoke to the Top Gun and that Americana and being white and being ultra, like everything that I was not and every thing was against me it was me against the world yeah that's the only way i can explain it and so to see this reboot now i'm like oh hell to the end to the no fuck (laughs) off tom cruise i really hope it doesn't do well i'm sorry lady gaga but what were your thoughts when you saw this is coming out so the tra- I saw the trailer. I know it was coming out at first. And then the trailer came on in Dr. You were in Dr. No. I mean, Dr. No, too. Okay. <laughs> and all I could think was, why is this Why is this happening? Do we need this right now? I don't think we need this. Does Tom Cruise really need to recapture his glory days like this again? Why Thank can- you. There's-, there's so many other movies they can remake. Flashdance. It has... Uh, <gasps> biracial woman and dancing around fame fame Fame? hello i wanna live forever so many good (laughs) movies from the 80s that they could remake that could that fit today's landscape in this climate exactly that is exactly the word i was looking for i appreciate in this climate and i was singing maniac the entire time top gun was on on the on the (laughs) the screen (laughs) so just to we because we are a live show and damon points out what does damon say because i appreciate it volleyball scene was intentionally homoerotic okay i i think i remember that and it was i mean no do they not look good and who's the other actor in the original i don't know you don't know what's his name is really hot val kilmer was, was in was the original in he was so hot in that movie back in the day so i know these things it's not that i don't know them you're right about the volleyball scene it was homoerotic val Kilmer dated share way back when says blake i love the- <laughs> you can always count on blake i love that yeah you know teddy says so many original scripts like yeah. there, there's only so many original scripts i think is what yeah you're trying to say go ahead Cody. i think he means that there are original scripts that we could have come out as well as opposed to remaking something that's old right yeah and so to me you know you talk about trigger points that triggered me when i saw that tom what Cruz was making that movie and just mm-hmm. knowing everything about Leah Remini and how she's called out Scientology. I just, I don't know. There's a lot of like trigger yeah. moments when I see that, that just triggered me. And when I was a little boy, so to wrap it up and bring it back to what we were talking about, to see strange loop with a Tony nominated black queer, uh, just fuller lead. figure yes. lead is yes. just makes my heart sing it really yeah. makes my heart sing. to see a drag a drag queen prom king yeah makes my heart Ew. sing i'm just yeah absolutely yeah so, so fun man, nobody go see tom uh top gun <laughs> <laughs> i mean people can do it though the gays will go too because it's got a the song that's probably gonna win that academy award stream by lady song. gaga stream, stream the, the song <laughs> support gaga don't no don't go see that movie no. yeah <laughs> exactly all right what's our next topic cody so, i think we gotta how app? about we okay, do yeah 
What do you think about the, because we can stay on this teenage years things. What about the yeah. songs oh, for teenage years? Yes. Things? Oh, thank you. I forgot. I don't even have it in my notes here. And I love that topic so good, much. Right? There's a recent Reddit thread that asked the question, what's a song from your teenage years that empowered you to own your sexuality? Even if, like me, according to the person, you played mm -hmm. it only on your Walkman or Discman, that would be me, with headphones on. So I know my songs. We're going to play the game. Somebody broke the Goo Goo Dolls Iris. Yep, I remember that song. <laughs> okay, this is, I'm a little, I'm going to go older than that. Somebody wrote Green Day Minority. Okay. What else did we see in here? What's some of the gayer ones that people were, Queen, Somebody to Love. There we go. That's a great yeah. one. For me, somebody else said Depeche Mode, anything by Pet Shop Boys or Madonna for sure. Um, oh, yeah. You know, for me, to answer the question, what's a song from my teenagers that empowered me to own my sexuality? Really, I remember in grade school, in theology, religion class, we had mm -hmm. to choose a song and I chose by George Michael, I Want Your Sex. And Ooh. I somehow quoted George That's Michael in theology class in eighth grade because the importance of sex and how I want your sex, sex is natural. He says, mm -hmm. sex is good. And all the things that he says in there. And my theology teacher in Catholic grade, you know, junior high endorsed it and said, that's yeah. really great, Steve. Well, you know why? Because that song is about monogamy. Yeah, right. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I forgot about that part, but yeah. <laughs> <And> yeah. <laughs> it's natural. <laughs> if not the 45 i have the 45 i brought it back here it's somewhere over there in the corner but yeah monogamy okay yeah you and i think i talked about that in class you forgot about the next line sex is best when it's one on one you were like i ah, fuck that because sex <laughs> is best when it's say it one one on on one. one yeah <laughs> did you love that song i loved that song it was good i also love faith by george i love all george <gasps> michael uh, okay like just exquisite but the songs that i wrote down is anything janet jackson that oh is, yes come is, on now you know that was me too though i know <laughs> that's why i wrote it down control and, album and that's the way love goes those were my so you're a little bit awakening. later yeah. yeah a little bit just a little bit yeah but i was the control album for sure yeah. because i also was a shy kid and any like control for sure was yeah yeah or that what have you done for me lately? lately. <laughs> <laughs> I also wrote down uh, Free by Ultranate. You remember that song? I just remember going to the um, club. Can you sing us a little bit? <laughs> Everybody's free to feel good. And then Unspeakable Joy by Kim English. You remember that song? I do. 90s, I played right? It for Joe. Yeah, in the 90s. I played it for Joe. He's like, what is this song? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, okay, all right. <laughs> Believe it or not, in terms of sexual sexuality, mm -hmm. before Madonna, I actually heard the song Girls Just Want to Have Fun. It was <gasps> Christmas Eve, and I had a Walkman, and I was uh -huh. playing it. Not, I rewound it, played it, rewound it, played it, rewound it, played it. Should I do it again? We round it, and I <laughs> loved it so much. It was pre Madonna, mm -hmm. not pre Madonna, but pre Madonna, and it. I it gave me life because it was about she's doing this dance and skipping around, and her hair's out there. She's and so I think unusual. I, as a gay, as a young closeted gay boy who was a performer at heart, I was a gymnast and I performed a lot. I wanted that fire that she had in that song oh, she's to amazing. come out even more and her voice. a little bit of it but yeah but in terms of what a song can do to you that song gave me life it gave me yeah. that someday i'm going to be hosting a show where we're going to be talking yeah. about <laughs> all freedom it. and i made my way here and i'm so happy but music can do that what are the people saying what are some songs the, that people are the people are saying blake he blew me out the water because justify my love oh my goodness that oh, video okay. 
and Lenny Kravitz wrote that song, honey, it was over for me. <laughs> and talk about sexuality. <laughs> that is a sexy, sexy song. Sexy. And, uh, Teddy I says, think I have, you guys, wait real quick on that one. Okay, I bought the, the VHS copy of it that mm -hmm. only, they didn't, MTV wouldn't play it. And Ooh, I bought, I have a copy of it, it somewhere. Yeah, Let's I don't have a VHS watch. player, but yeah. <laughs> if you could get that, uh, we'll, we'll have a party. We have to have it converted. That's what we got to do. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. What, okay. what else are the people saying? Uh, Teddy says, Fiebre by Yolanda Monge. I don't oh. know how to pronounce that last name. Okay. And, and now Blake says, I had the video taped off TV when she was on Nightline and they interviewed her about it. Oh, yeah. Classic Madonna. Classic Madonna. Classic Madonna. That video was the best. Do you have so. a song that was just as, a, no, anything that's Donna Summer? Yeah. I'm, I'm getting some nods for Donna Summer over there. Ooh. But yeah. Honestly, yeah. Donna. What's, um, what's that song? I Feel Love. Oh, that is a great that song. That has got to be a lot of people's sexuality because when yes. we saw the musical for Donna Summer, uh, it was she, the way they told that she recorded it, she wasn't getting it just right. She was in Europe recording it and they said she got on the floor and she started gyrating with, and they brought the microphone all the way down and she was gyrating and that's how she sung the song and the actress oh that um who's the actress that won an academy award played it um adriana dubose oh. okay played, was um was the actress that played it on broadway and i she was doing that moment it was so amazing oh yeah my, so i love cool. that yeah okay. i mean i love all that right song. Okay. love it well it's time <laughs> for our final segment that we do this every week it's by uh, excuse me, it's my straight up gay porn. And they ask the question every week. I love that they do this. You can vote on their thirst trap recap. Which of these 20 gay porn stars took the best photo or video? And you can vote on their website, which is really awesome. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, they do a recap. Remember, Cody, they did that? Oh, yeah. And it's really my cool. Thing. So <laughs> I put it present. in the Christmas present, yeah. <laughs> so your our job, since we're primarily a audio podcast, is to descriptively describe to you why we like it. I will post this on tagspodcast.com, and you guys can vote for yourselves and see what we're talking about. But it, what was your pick this week, Cody? And descriptively oh. describe. Okay, I'm going to go first. Um, first of all, I want to say they have a trans man on the list. So shout out they to do? Noah Way. Yes, I thought that was amazing. Wow, I love it. Yes, snaps. Uh, however, my vote does go to Daniel Montoya only because I have admired him. I have a crush on him uh, and his husband for a very, very long time. <clears throat> I'm excited. I'm excited to see them on this list. He's luxuriating outside and he's on he's tanning by the pool on what looks to be a lounge chair i remember when i forgot that word that one time <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> and there and i know he's not going to have any tan lines because he's completely naked he's lying on his stomach with his beautiful plump ass in the air waiting to be munched on he's taking a selfie from the front with his face in the frame and did i mention that his ass looks so edible and delicious uh <laughs> he's got his blue the blue water in the background and some green hedges and it's just a beautiful shot so snaps to and my props go to daniel montoya I love it. Very good descriptively yeah. describing that. And I'm just going to go through a recap starting from the bottom. That, okay. Yeah. I just have to say there were so many in this that are giving us everything. Roxas so Calum has a huge yeah. dick. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's black. It's long. Copperhead and Trey. Did you see I, that one? Copperhead Trey also serving in the package <laughs> department. Great abs. So I'm loving that. I really like Buck Richards because he's at a nude beach. And I love a good nude beach moment. And that gives me life. So I'm living for that. Hatler, I'm really into tattoos right now. And he's tatted up 
from literally his his whole legs are tatted up all the way up like thigh highs and his chest and his arms are it's really impressive and he's got a hard dick so that's hot too moving on into the mix i really appreciate that you called out noah way a trans male model i love that tanner reed has huge balls so i'm not mad at that and (laughs) getting towards the top of the list which were some of my favorites were kyle fletcher who has a beautiful dick it's plump and he should be on that show that we were talking about he's got a beautiful body um and trevor brooks i'm surprised you didn't call out trevor brooks who's showing his ass off and it's really hot i'm toya i'm I'm, yes he does (laughs) what do the people (laughs) say the people are saying that daniel montoya is very peachy and they like my pick also copperhead tray which was another i was like i don't know who to pick now but of course i had the the ass always wins out (laughs) (laughs) and that's what james said james says he likes copperhead tray and then blake says he likes brent savage he's given bad oh. boy but make it pretty so nice i, I love, love it, it. Yeah. and we are at our hour mark here this has been okay. so much fun thanks guys so for playing fun. everybody thank you so much fun you can follow my co-host cody maurice dog get at mr maurice on instagram or he's a life coach y'all do you still have some spots available i do or- one spot all right go to kmd coaching kmd coaching on instagram follow us at tags podcast we're live every wednesday night at 9 p.m eastern time and for all show notes go to tagspodcast.com thank you so much for joining us it's been so much fun on this wednesday night and in the meantime continue having hot gay Gay sex. sex thank you so much fun